Um, Maria, is it possible to do this in cinema? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, the Shiny Squirrel. Who made this? Designer of Stefan. Stefan. How do you? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's like a German B, isn't it? So let's say Stefan Grobe, but it's probably not that. Halberg. Uh, anyway, question is this. Now, uh, first of all, let's see. It's an illustration, Light of the Cosmos, full project here. Yeah, why not? Let's take a look at it. Maybe there'll be more information. Light of the Cosmos. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can totally do this in cinema. In fact, this was probably made in something similar to cinema. And uh, looking at this photo, I recognize not their art, but this is a photo from the Hubble Telescope. And the photo is called The Pillars of Creation. Uh, in fact, why don't we go ahead and find it because we're going to use it. Now, luckily, if you're a United States citizen, any images taken by NASA are public domain. Pillars of Creation. And the Pillars of Creation are actually a small photo from a much larger nebula, which is pretty cool. Um, I think, yeah, see this nebula here? It's like this image is a tiny zoom up of like a little teeny corner of this. So this is just stardust, effectively. Oh, yeah, see right here? Like it's zooming in in that tiny area. It's a tiny area of this bigger image, which is probably part of this tiny image. Um, but in any case, why don't we go ahead and I'm going to click on search tools, size, large, and let's just get a large version of it. Uh, that one's looking pretty good. This one's off of Wikipedia. Uh, so I'm going to view the image, right click, save as, um, let's just jump into here, raw files, new folder, texture folder, uh, pillars of creation, big, cool. Okay. So we got our pillars of creation image saved in. And let's jump on into Cinema 4D. And now the interesting thing, looking at this project, is mm, there there is a, some curvature to it. There's not, it's not just flat. So, but I think I have an idea of how to do that. Um, so why don't we go ahead and create a plane? This is going to be pretty straightforward, actually. We're going to create a plane, and let's view it from the top, pretty much perfectly from the top. It's probably a good idea to create a camera. And I'm going to, on the camera, we can like zero out these numbers and get nice and precise, negative 90. And then we can go zero, zero, and now we have very precise control of, over what we're looking. Now that picture I took looked like it was very uh, square, which is helpful. So let's go pillars. And now let's go ahead into a material, create a new material. Mm, maybe the luminous channel, I don't know. Let's start with the luminous channel. Uh, let's go and click on the dots to go find our image. Cool. Go ahead and apply. Very straightforward so far. Okay, cool. So we've applied that image. Now, I think the most simple bit of this is going to be grabbing our pillars of creation and dropping it also into our displacement channel. So we do that. Put it in the displacement. Turn on sub-poly displacement. And actually, I'm going to delink from our camera for a second so we can actually see what we're looking at here. So let's go ahead and just hit render and see what we get. Oh, look at that. Not too shabby so far. Let's set that to 50 instead of 5. Render. Oh, look at that. Look at these little pillars shooting out from the image. And then overall, a depth pushing down on the center bit. If we go back to our camera, we're going to have a little bit of perspective here. And look at that. We're getting all these nice little sharp points poking out from there. It's looking pretty good. Um, let's go to our subdivision level. Let's jump it up to maybe five. I want to see if we can make these stars a little sharper. It does just seem to be built into the image where these kind of have this reddish fall off. So we're going to get those pillars like that. Now, um, maybe, maybe they have some curvature to it, or maybe they just start getting a bit of a fisheye. It's hard to tell what the fisheye is doing here. So I'm just going to create a landscape object for a second. That's going to give us a little bit of idea. So if we zoom way out and pull, no, that flattens. We actually want to pull in and then zoom out. Yeah, there we go. So now you see we're getting lots and lots of height from our landscape. Probably too much. So let's hit render here and it might be chaos. Yes, it's chaos because I went way too far with it. Still kind of neat looking. Um, so now we need to zoom in a bit and zoom out. Let's actually see. This might be better if we go to our camera. 
and see how what our focal length is. So normally, what's normal? Like 40 or 30? We set the default. Yeah, 36. So let's try and jump this down to 10. And now that we're at 10, why don't we just get close enough so that it kind of fills our frame and hit render. There we go. Now you see we're getting, I, I thought we were going to have to bend it to get it to pop out, but we actually can get this perspective just by getting a little bit of a fisheye lens going. So we get all the little points sticking out. We get all the depth happening here. I mean, oh, like at a glance, like, and look, you can clearly see I was totally right. Like we are nearly perfectly recreating this image. Like there's these shapes. You can see the little red fall off happening right there. So this is just the image put on a plane extruded with a certain millimeter uh, focal distance. I might be saying that wrong. I don't know camera terms. Um, uh, yeah, a focal, I did say it right, focal length of uh, 10 millimeters. So why don't we go ahead and send this out to the picture viewer because this was so quick and spot on. Why don't we go ahead and just spend a little bit of time and jump into Photoshop and try and make this to make this look a little nicer. I'm going to start launching Photoshop because it takes a little bit on this hard drive. Uh, and let's zoom in a bit and hit render. I want to make sure that we're framed up where we can actually see this a bit. Yes, thank you, Photoshop. Render, please. Uh, we can crop it in Photoshop, so that's actually working fine. I think our pillars are a little taller. I'm fine with that. Um, and in, in some ways, I wish our image was bigger. And I wonder if we, maybe we should go back into uh, our different images here. And maybe we can find an image where it's a little bit more zoomed out, because I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of this environment. But that just might not be possible. Um, to get that more in context, because we just need a giant image where we see more of it. Um, and I'm just not seeing that as an option here. God. I love space stuff, like just these clouds of dust makes these amazing images. Um, so yeah, we'll just work from this. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell this to go out to the picture viewer. And actually, if we were going uh, a little bit extra fancy, we can actually go into our render settings here, maybe add in an ambient occlusion, because why not? And now we can go into our multi-pass and tell this to add in an amb ambient, is that what we're getting? Oh, ambient occlusion there. Get an ambient occlusion pass out of this. And um, is there anything else we could pull from it? I mean, there's a lot of things we could do. We could actually light this. Um, you know, get a little bit of lighting on it, get like a spotlight on it from above, all those different things. Uh, I kind of don't think I want to do that. So why don't we just go ahead and set ourselves up with our different passes here. So why don't we set this to, I don't know, I, we don't have to get too fancy. I'll just set it to a JPEG, save it into today's render. Um, pillars 1, A. And then a Photoshop document, which can be 8-bit. And that will be also in here, which can be Pillars pillars 1B. Cool. And now we can send that out to the picture viewer. Also, you can see the way our image is framing up. But in Photoshop, we can just crop that a bit. So I guess I'll just up our res a tiny bit so that we can crop it to the res I want. Cool. And now... Let's send that to the picture viewer again. Should just take a second longer. I guess we also have our ambient occlusion uh, layer, which is going to make it take longer with uh, the sheer number of subdivisions we have. But look, the ambient occlusion is giving us this crazy, crazy, like, moonscape type pass, uh, which honestly could become an image unto itself. Uh, our color channel, I guess, might all inherently have this dark area which I might want to just render it again without the ambient occlusion. Uh, and it is going to take a little bit longer. I guess the, the ambient occlusion adds high settings with this sheer number of polys that we're throwing at up because, because of our five layers of subdivision. It just takes a long time. I guess along those lines, it's, I can mention this as a separate thing. Um, you open up a new file, dock this. But you got to keep in mind when you're adding additional... Uh, the recording is unexpectedly terminated. What? It looks like our screen flow just crashed. I wonder if it got lost. Well, it still automatically saves to Twitch, but that could be a little bit of a pain. Start recording. Is it recording? 
seems to say it's recording. We're still streaming, but it seems like the screen flow crashed, which is bad, I guess. Um, oh, uh, so let's say uh, uh, when you're doing a sub-poly displacement, um, you got to keep in mind the exponential nature of it. So like here is like, this is a polygon. And you're like, okay, cool. I want to sub-poly subdivide this one time. So it's like going to subdivide and saying, boom. So it didn't create two polys, it created four. And you're like, you know what? I want two levels of sub-poly displacement. So now it does that. And now you're like, you know what? I want three levels of sub-poly displacement. It does that. Four levels, five levels. So it's like, so you say five, but this isn't like five polygons across. It's five times four times as many polys. Um, so like once you start getting to six or something, like this is a lot of polygons being generated. Um, so good to keep in mind uh, the growth rate on that. Still taking a while. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a good ten minutes, I think. I really do like that pass, though. It's pretty neat. Uh, but you know what we can do? Oh, I know what we can totally do. Uh, we can start working on some of the effects. Uh, I'm gonna turn off our ambient occlusion, and I'm just gonna hit render here. It's gonna render super quick, and now I can take a screenshot. And then we can go into Photoshop and start working. All right, we won't be perfectly framed up, but we're just playing with colors and whatnot. So I'm going to copy that. And now we can go into Photoshop, uh, maximize our screen, new file. Um, it's not quite square, but I guess we should jump it to our final res, which is going to be 2000. Paste, and we'll just scale this guy up to fit. Keep in mind, everything we do won't be perfectly overlaying on the other one, but we can work from this. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate my layer. I always like keeping the original down here while I'm working. So there's a good chance we'll actually be cropping this. So to fake the crop, because I want to keep the resolution, I'm just going to enlarge it. So now we're going to make that a little bit bigger like that. And then we get that image. So that's kind of neat. And then we can jump in. Um, and then right away, I mean, Vibrance is a fun, fun little one to play with right away. I, I use it sparingly, like... Uh, I hate so much when you're like on some website, like you're on Reddit or something, and I'm subscribed to a bunch of different photo things just because I think they're neat. And then you'll see a photo, and it's like, oh, it's a gorgeous river, but then you'll see that they took a photo and they just put it in the Photoshop and then cranked the vibrance all the way. And it's like, there's no way that that like, river is bright, 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 bright blue, and the trees are bright, 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 bright green. I don't know, it just takes away. But you use a little bit of it, though, and you can, you know, make everything a little bit more vibrant. Um,. I like jumping in the curves and honestly just playing around with them. Like we can play with our overall contrast here. Maybe pull this a little darker and make the darker the darks darker, the lights lighter, or you can do the opposite. Um, make the lights darker and the darks lighter, and we're gonna kind of gray it all out. Of course, that's not usually the way to go. Um, making everything a little bit dark here is actually kind of neat. Do we want to brighten up? Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna keep it all a little bit darker, and maybe we'll do some screen overlays on top of it. So we'll do that. Actually, I didn't mean to exit that yet. So that's kind of the overall color, but now we can jump into red. And let's see, maybe we can pull this red down a little. And I see we get a little bit more of the blue territory, but we can brighten up the reds here or do the opposite. I, and honestly, I don't have a specific goal here. I just start playing around, uh, go into our green. Uh, so yeah, now we can really pull in the purples or we can pull it more into the green territory, which I do kind of like that. Pull that up there, maybe deeper here. Oh, there you go. I like that blue we can even grab this base dot and pull it around more yellow more blue actually it's kind of neat blowing it out a little bit like that a little bit overexposed kind of blue there so that does an overall color and then something that well uh, let's see it might be nice to add a quick vignette on here so i'm just gonna make a new layer hit g that automatically jumps to gradient if it doesn't you didn't you can hit shift g and you can cycle through all of the different tool things here so shift g eventually will get you to gradient <laughs> By default, we're already on this circular. I already have black to white, so I can just go ahead and draw that full fall off. It was actually correct. I often have my gradient backwards, so then I just have to, hit, have to hit Command or Control I to invert it. But now we've got that, so now I could say Overlay. And now we get our little bit of a vignette effect. We clearly don't want it all the way powered, but a little bit. Just to make it darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. Already looking a little bit cooler there. Um, so now something I like doing, and I always, what's the shortcut? Command, Alt, Shift, E. This is goofy, a shortcut. So if you want to duplicate all of your layers and kind of flatten it out as a duplicate, the shortcut is Command, Alt, Shift, E. That's the craziest shortcut. 
Uh, and then you get a duplicate of your entire layer. So there we go. This is our duplicate of our entire layer. Uh, I want to get a little bit of glow going here. So I'm going to go to my levels, and I want to crush out everything except for the brightest points, like that. And I'm actually going to duplicate it at this point, because I, one of these I want to keep the colors, and the other I want to be white. So I'm going to go to blur. Actually, before we do that, why don't we tell this to screen on top of the under, underlying layer? And... It's probably having a little bit of effect, but not much. You see, there's just a little bit of extra blow out there. But now, if I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we could probably use some other blurs. In fact, we could have probably gotten some nice depth of field. If we'd thought about that with a pass, we could have rendered this out with a depth pass and then gotten a little bit of blur on the depth, which would be really neat. Um, but now, we can start blurring those layers, and now you start seeing we get this little bit of glow on the brightest points. So that's pretty neat. And now, I'm going to grab this other layer, and I'm going to drain all the saturation out from it. Go Maybe even go back to layers and, and make it even a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Really get those bright points there. And now we can also screen this layer. So you see those are blowing to white, which is kind of cool by itself. You can see it turn on or off. Now we can just take that and also throw a Gaussian blur on it. Maybe more, maybe less than the other one. It's just dependent on like what you what you like the look of. It's very subtle, actually, because those points are fairly bright already. So this makes it uh, these glows, I think, makes everything feel a little more ethereal. If you if you keep it light, then it can just feel like it's blowing out a little bit on the camera. But if you start going very far, it starts feeling a little bit more like a greased lens, a little bit more uh, you know heavenly, dreamy kind of effect. Um, so those are kind of neat. Uh, I might pull the vignette above them just to uh, keep that overlaying so that these aren't. You know, they're not on top of it. Um, so those are optional. I mean, obviously, uh, I can turn those on or off. Like, um, I don't know. I I like them, but I also don't like them. I, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep our white glow to lighten that all up, but I'm not going to use a saturated glow because that starts feeling a little, like, neon-y. Um, so that's working well. Uh, now one of the problems is those blurs that we just threw on there. We can't copy those. Like I, I kind of forgot that we had another render going in the background. We can't copy those in. Like these other, all these other ones we're doing kind of procedurally, so we could have brought the other image in. Uh, and in fact, at this point, we can just take a look at the way that's rendering. But I don't think we're actually going to do that process. But I, I really do like that. And this ambient occlusion layer is kind of gorgeous by itself. Um, so I feel like there's a lot you could do just with that. It's pretty spooky. Um, so uh, I'd say that I usually call it quits right around there. Uh, you could do like a texture overlay on top of it. Like I said, some depth, a depth pass on here would have been really cool. Uh, but uh, the last thing I always do is just, because you never know, I always grab a hue saturation as a last step. And I just kind of cycle through some other colors and see if I see a, a shifted color that I like even more. Like that's kind of neat right there. Like obviously we weren't designing for it to be that color and we're getting away from the pillars of creation, but you know, like these are, that's pretty neat. That's starting to feel like, I don't know, those are not colors I would have inherently thought to pick. So I actually, anything in this range, like I like that a lot. I like that a lot. It really is flattening it out a lot, but in a really interesting way. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. That's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and save this Photoshop file. Pillars 1C. Neat. So that was fun. Um, and then we're also going to get this big old final image out, but we're not going to worry about that. You see you see what the raw material might be able to do with that. And I, like this ambient occlusion is very strong, but like if it was if you set that to overlay and you kept it light, like 10%, then you just, you know, fill in the gaps a little bit, a little bit more definition, maybe a little bit more physicality. Uh, Would have been pretty neat there. Uh, but yeah, that was a fun one. Thanks for that question. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Uh, and it's, unu it's unusual for us to so perfectly uh, see exactly what they did. Um, so we, we totally nailed, uh, nailed the effect that they did. So th there's no question as to if they made that or not, uh, or if they made it that way. Uh, okay, we're going to jump around a little bit. I want to see what people are talking about down here. Uh, somebody lost connection.